Greetings, friends around the world. This is Dr. Bob Teal for the Bible News Prophecy Channel. I'd like to talk a little bit about the Temple Institute and God's ultimate goal. Now, the Temple Institute is based out of Israel. Matter of fact, they have a headquarters building in Jerusalem that I visited back in 2013. And normally when I've mentioned them in these video messages, I've talked about their position on animal sacrifices, uh, another temple, as well as uh, red heifers. But this time I want to go a little bit more into their theology. I received their electronic newsletter yesterday, and the title of that particular newsletter article was Hashem will reign to all eternity. Now, the term Hashem literally means the name, and it's used by certain Jews to refer to God. So let me read what they set out. Israel is free on its own, independent. That's the new reality as we begin this week's Torah reading. Beshalak. Well, not quite. Israel's in the wilderness, seemingly wandering aimlessly as God directs them. First to this location, then to that. They're fleeing from a very nasty past, but are heading into an unknown future. No one really knows where they're heading, and just how far they'll get. Even Moshe, Moses, seems to be playing it one day at a time. In fact, they be, seem to be so lost that Pharaoh, barely recovered from the loss of his firstborn, has decided that they are astray in the land, the wilderness has closed in on them, and are ripe for retaking. As Pharaoh and his legions close in on Israel, it all seems lost, what has barely begun. Unbeknownst to either Israel or Pharaoh, God has a plan. And that's true. God does have a plan. But many, including the Temple Institute, don't fully understand various aspects of the plan. Now, one of the reasons that the Temple Institute doesn't understand various aspects of the plan is they have not accepted that Jesus is the Messiah and they don't believe the New Testament. We have a free book, Proof Jesus is the Messiah, which you can find at ccog.org under the literature tab. It's free. You can read it. We don't ask you for your email address or anything. You just read it. We go through hundreds of scriptures, Hebrew scriptures from the Old Testament, as we call it, that Jesus fulfilled. Plus there's a chapter explaining from Jewish traditions and writings why Jews should accept that Jesus was Messiah. Because if they were willing to do so, they'd have a better understanding of God's plan. Now anyway, I'd like to go back to the newsletter from the Temple Institute, because in that same newsletter they had some more that I'd like to read. God's ultimate goal is to enter into a covenant with Israel, as we will soon see at Sinai. In order to do so, Israel must be fully independent, cognizant people. In other words, Israel needs to grow up and grow up fast. And to grow up means to assume responsibility for oneself. Step by step, God is raising his people, fashioning them into what he will soon refer to as a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. And skipping down to it, they conclude, Hashem will reign to all eternity. Hashem, again, we're talking about God. And certainly God is going to reign all eternity. So they've got that right. And that's consistent, by the way, with prophecies in both the Old Testament and New Testament, such as Micah 4, 7 and Revelation 11, verse 15. And that's part of the good news of the coming kingdom of God. But I'd like to go to another point they brought out, which was, God has a plan to have a nation of priests, or actually those called to be priests. And that's actually also taught in the New Testament. If you've got your Bibles, you might want to follow along. I'm going to go to Revelation, chapter 1. I'm going to read from the New King James Version of the Bible, starting with verse 4. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him, who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth. To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. 
dominion forever and ever. It's talking about reigning forever and ever. And again, it's talking about God's people being well, not just priests, but also kings and priests. Now this is also repeated in Revelation 5, verse 10. And have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. Now when is that going to happen? What's going to happen after something the Bible calls the first resurrection? So let's go to the book of Revelation again, but this time start chapter 20, and we're going to read verse 6. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. So yes, we see not only is reigning part of God's plan, but the call of being priests for that time as well. But why? Now, is the purpose of this priesthood in the future to just tell people to gaze at God for eternity, uh, what's called the beatific vision? Or is it uh, more than that? Is it to teach them to love and to be the type of people that God wanted? You know, what is the plan? Well, God's ultimate plan is that he's in the process of reproducing himself. And I want to read something about what's going to happen after the resurrection. This is in 2 Corinthians chapter 6. I'm going to read verse 18. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Now, why is this all part of the plan? What is the plan? Well, in 1 John or verse 8, we read that God is love, and love is the foundation of the plan. God's plan is to have his sons and daughters be able to give love in a unique way in order to make eternity better for themselves and everyone else. And because places like the Temple Institute don't accept the New Testament, the Scripture, they're blinded to many of the mysteries of God's plan. And sadly, so are most who profess Christ, including various ones, many who are in the churches of God. But you can know the mysteries of God's plan. And we have a free book, free booklet, if you will, The Mystery of God's Plan, Why Did God Create Anything? Why Did God Make You? Which goes into depth, quotes from various religions, including the ones who profess Christ and those who don't, about what they think God's plan is. But this also goes with scriptures to explain many of the mysteries of God's plan. This is something you can know that places like the Temple Institute don't know. And it's free at uh, www.ccog.org. Yes, God does have a plan. God will reign for eternity, and you can have your part in it. And for more information, again, we suggest you read our free booklet, The Mystery of God's Plan. This is Dr. Bob Teal for the Bible News Prophecy Channel.